the God. <laughs> and he is alive. Even in the midst of a pandemic, he is alive. Even in the midst of when everybody is running around confused, chaotic, and unsure about the scared to even move sometimes, God is still God. You got to remember before the pandemic came here, I recall a time period where that the Bible said the earth was without form and void. And darkness covered the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Tell me that was a time period that there was no wind or where. <laughs> there was no then or there. There was nothing. But God was still there. So now that we have something, we learn to do what? We learn now that even in the midst of rough times, Unseeable time. We learn to do what? Trust in God. Hey, just trust in God. And that's it. I, I've heard all the conversations. I, I've heard all the talk. I heard uh, some people getting depressed in their own house. So they're tired of looking at someone, someone on TV and say, you know what? I never knew I had that many clothes. So I'm just depressed about all the money I spent. Mad. People just going to the homes right now. Homes are breaking up right now because they got too much time together. What in the world? Strange things just going on. Someone said, someone said, I can't see nothing good that came out of this. I said, gas prices went down. <laughs> they went down. See, but it, it's amazing how you can fix your mind to see only what you want to see. Amen. And you, no matter what you see differently, your mind has been, if you want to see bad, I don't care if the sun is shining 90 degrees outside with a cool breeze in it, if you want to see bad, you're going to see bad. Amen. Whatever you want to see, when you fix your mind in that direction, that's what you're going to conceive. That's why I say you got it. You got, we have to learn, church, we have to learn to see God in everything. In everything. Because he's a controlling agent in it all. No matter how many lives are being lost, no matter how folk are in the hospital still being sick, some being admitted, no matter what you see, you learn to see God in it all. Knowing the idea that God is still watching. God is still merciful. God is still long-suffering, not willing that anybody should perish, but what? Everybody should come to repentance. The key thing is, how long will it take one of us to come to repentance, to realize the idea that, stop trying to bargain with God. Lord, you give me this, I'll come to you. He said, well, I'll give you everything else, you ain't came to me then. We learn the idea just how to just to trust and lean depend upon God. And I tell you, I've been earth for a little while now. I told us this morning, I said, you know what I'm finding out now? And I said, I'm getting older now. So I'm getting older now. Body don't move the way you used to move no more. Mm -mm, move no. I drop a pistol on the floor right now. I may wait two days before I pick it up. I said, it ain't going nowhere. It'll be there when I get back. Mm, it, it, it's time to change. But one thing that should never change is our trust in God. It should get better and better and better as each obstacle goes by, as each good day, bad day, as every mountain you climb, every valley you hit, when you come out of it, you learn more about your God. And you learn this, Lord, I'm going to trust in you. I may have tears in my eyes, but I'm going to trust in you. Or I may get some dark day, but I'm going to trust in you. Because I know you delivered me back then. And I know you're going to deliver me now. I just want to say that. because I want to get discouraged this morning. But did this morning, as I said on last week, I said, the Lord will. We're going to look at one more time. Part two of we are God's workmanship. Going back to Ephesians chapter 2. I read it from a different translation. Hope you have your Bible this morning. Take some notes. Uh, yellow mark it. Get you a whole bunch of highlighters. and Just, just have it. Your Bible, just have that. 
If you're not sure, tell your neighbor, I'm sorry, man. But over in Ephesians chapter 2, little 2, starting at verse 1. You can read along with me, that's okay. Different translation, though. You think the word would be a little different, but the same. It said, and you had God quickened. That means made alive. Made alive. Who were dead in trespasses and sin. See, you had a heartbeat. You were still breathing, but you were dead to God because your union wasn't there. The relationship had been severed because of your trespasses and sin. It said, where in time past, do you, he's talking about, who walked, who God quickened, and time past, you walked according to the course of this world. And we said the idea, the, the Bible tells us, love not the world. For all that is in the world is the lust of the, you can say it with me, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of what? They are of the world, not of God. He said, but you walked according to those lusts and pride. He said, among whom also you had your living, here's the key, you lived out those lustful desires. You lived them out. Your life was a life full of lust and pride. You and no, notice sometimes you don't know what you was in until you get out of it. <laughs> Let that sit for a little while. Sometimes you don't know what you was into and what, what everything you did to your life until you get out of it. And then you look back and you ask yourself, how in the world did I get involved in that? What was I thinking? You no, know, it's not that you weren't thinking. The idea that you understand now how powerful sin really is. That's why you, we, we admonish others. We say all the time, Lord, give me something to say to turn their minds from the deeds of the, the course of this world unto you. When? We say, before it's everlasting too late. That's why we say that. He said, we were so bad, we were by nature. The children of wrath, even as others are, our nature had changed. And you know, from the very beginning, someone said, well, you was born with a sinful nature. And you know, God created you. Your DNA rests in God. But because of sin coming in, it infiltrated your life. And now you change, you start living a life, and the life made it look like the idea your very nature was sinful. The all in you were just no good. But watch, in the midst of all of that, the scriptures say, but God, who was rich in mercy and his great love, he loved us. When we was like that, he loved us. When we were dead in sins, he made us alive. His love, his mercy, his love, and he raised us up like a resurrection up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. This the transition he was moving us in in Christ. Oh, so that in the ages to come he may show forth the exceeding riches of his grace, his unmerited gift, and his kindness toward who? Us. Who's us? Who was dead in sin and trespasses. The us who, who he had made alive. The us. For by grace, do you see it now? You are saved through faith and not of yourself. Can't nobody brag about nothing. You can't say you better than me and I can't say I'm better than you. We all need the same thing that was grace. I told you I found in my lifetime the gospel to me it ain't nothing but one beggar tell another beggar when he found the bread. Hmm, let it sit for a while in mind. I, I saw your rib cage hanging out. They got bread over there. Because I was starving too at one time. And somebody showed me where to go get bread. Aren't you glad somebody showed you where to go get the bread? Uh, he said, not by works. that any man should boast. And then go right to my text. 
for we are his workmanship. Now, let's just go ahead. A word about workmanship. Paul begins the verse by saying, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. The words in the Bible are very important. Remember 2 Timothy 3.16? All scripture, yes sir, is given by the inspiration of God. It said, and it is profitable for what? Reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The first thing is, you got to believe what God said about you. You got to believe what the word says. Don't read it and doubt it. If you believe it, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, you got to believe what God has said. Why am I saying that? Because the word workmanship means that which is made. It's a work, a work of art. It comes from a word, I looked it up. That's where we get our word poem from, the word poem. It refers to a piece of literary workmanship. It came to refer to the author, the author or the writer's magnum opus or his greatest literary work or achievement. In other words, it means that it refers to his masterpiece. Stay with me now. Paul is saying that the redeemed saints of God, those of us who have been born again by the truth, those who are in the one body, one law, one faith, one baptism, Paul is saying you are his masterpiece. Well, oh, let's sit for a while. How you feel about yourself? How do you look at you? He said, in Christ, who, who created you, you are his masterpiece. The saints are the greatest achievement. The saints are the greatest work of a master potter. The saints are the greatest letter ever written by the hand of a master author. The redeemed saints of God are the results of God's loving industry. We are saved because he took the shapeless, dead clay of our lives in his loving, powerful hands, and he molded us into something new for his glory with loving care. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Can you see him coming? I see him coming. Isaiah said, for unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given. He said, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And then he shall be called counselor. <laughs> Prince of peace. Is that right? Mighty God. The everlasting father. Can you see him coming? I can see him coming in his love. Coming to draw us out. To make a masterpiece out. You see what it cost him? I can see him on the cross of Calvary. I can see him in the garden of Gethsemane. As he's stroking out with his own blood. The portrait of us. Who he calls his masterpiece. God shaped us. By his grace. And wrote his love on our life. How do we see ourselves? We're so busy. Trying to prove who we are the people, just live for Christ. Just live for Christ. God is not concerned about our conversation. He's not concerned about your talk. He's concerned about how we live. You ain't gonna convert nobody by conversation. They wait to see how you live. Just live. Just live for Christ. Don't get entangled with folks' conversations. There's some tricky folk out there now. Get you all twisted up in conversation and you forget what you were talking about. But when you just commit yourself to living, like Brother Hill said this morning, I'm not worried about trying to store up 
all this stuff in my garage, in my closets, in my pantry. You know what? I've learned in all things to be content. I've learned in my lifetime more is not always better. Sometimes I find myself, I can do a whole lot more with 15 cents than I can do with a whole dollar. Because it makes me watch how I spend that 15 cents. If I ain't got no more, that's left. When that's gone, that's gone. So I watch how I spend it now. But that whole dollar, I keep spending until I get down to 15 cents. Lord have mercy. It's amazing the idea what we learn when we apply God's wisdom to our lives. The word wrought in that verse means he fashions us. We are his workmanship. When you stop to think about the raw materials God has to work with when he saves sinners and changes lives, it all becomes far more incredible. The redeemed are God's love letters to a lost world. Every time we walk outside our church, those who don't know Christ, we are God's love letters. How we show Christ to them, show them how much God loves them where they are. And show that he didn't want them to stay where they are by how we live. I know, I know sometimes you say, Brother Kim is, woo, I got some hard-headed relatives. And I want them to come to Christ. And they just ain't listening. That's how I know. I said, I know, I know, I know. Because one, one time, you didn't listen either. Yeah, yeah but yeah, but them, them jokers there, woo, they just wow, bro. Kim, they is out there, out where. They out there doing this, this, and this. Yeah, yeah, you was out there too. I'm trying to figure out, what can I say to them? Nothing, just live. Just walk before them. To Abraham, be thou perfect. Just walk before them. We are his workmanship. If you are saved, your life is God's love letter. I said that. And through you, he tells this world that he loves sinners. His son died to redeem the lost. There is life-changing power in the grace of God. And that the gospel is real. And that Jesus Christ makes a difference in every life he redeems through the power of his blood. See, they don't understand you. They don't. No. But you try to make them understand. I got you, I got you. See, when we get mad and say stuff we shouldn't say, we know we have an advocate to the Father, Jesus Christ the Son. We know we confess our faults before them. Or before him, he's faithful and just to forgive us. We know this. We know the idea and we think that we shouldn't think. We know how to go to him in a repentant, in a spirit of humility. Ask God for We know these things. But the sinner don't know that. So they see you get upset, they use it against you. Ah, oh, Christian, when you get mad for it, you can't get mad. But you know your Bible said, be angry and sin not. Don't the sun go down on you. You know this, but they don't know this. That's why the Bible says that when you give the gospel to them and make them disciples, that conviction brings them in. Then he said in Great Commission, teaching them to observe all things. Now they learn how I can go through stuff, but now I got an advocate on my side. And when you understand that, you don't sway back out into the world when you mess up. You just repent and stay where you are. But many of us are not rooted in the word of God. Therefore, when we do stuff we shouldn't do, we sway out into that world. Oh, boy. That's a bad place to be in. Listen. No artist paints a painting to hide it in the closet. No, you don't. No sculptor fashions a sculpture just to hide it away in an unseen place. No writer writes a novel and works to keep it hidden. For we are God's workmanship, 
any man who is a Christian, who is in union with Christ, is a product of the skill and the artistry of the Lord God, our maker. Listen, can I tell you something? No Christian, keep this, no Christian evolves on his own. No. No Christian can just change all by himself. Everybody needs somebody. <laughs> Everybody needs somebody. You don't just become a mature Christian by chance, but by being recreated in Christ by God. We are an example of the workmanship of the Almighty. That's why the idea is imperative that when we come together, we come together to encourage one another, to, 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 to provoke one another toward love, toward good works. That's why we come together for it. And when we are not here together, we seek other ways, other avenues to call one another, to encourage one another. Because you don't know who needs uplifting right now. Amen. You don't know who's going through something right now. It may be all party time in your house, but somebody going through something somewhere. It's always good to share with somebody. Because you are God's workmanship. Now look. <laughs> The Lord didn't save you or save me just to be a Christian on Sundays. We walk in the door singing, hallelujah, praise Jehovah. Then come Monday, oh, how I love to serve the devil. He didn't just save you for Sunday. He saved us for our life, for our life. And we give our, I'm not saying we serve a devil in here now. I, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying I did. we give our lives to the Lord. You ought to give so much to the Lord, you don't have nothing to give to no, 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 no other authority in your life. Give it all to God. That's why I said the idea, you know, when, when something happened to me and my wife is left here by herself, the Lord done called me away. She left there by herself with my big, huge bank account, <laughs> with my big car, my big house, my last living room set I bought. I want to give so much to her that when I'm not here, all she can think about is me. Did you hear me, bro? That's what I want to do. But Mr. Here, I want to give so much that I don't have nothing else left. That no matter what goes on in life, she can say, I had the best of the best. I had what I needed. God blessed me with what I had. I don't need another ring. I don't need another man. I had the best of my life. With him. I, I just get a picture of me. You ain't got to take me down. Don't spend all that money. Trying to put me in the ground. Yeah. Cremate it. Let it be gone. Just, I'm like, brother, get a big picture. Put on the wall if you want to. So that was the man right there. We ought to give God so much of ourselves. When any other authority comes in, that wants to move in God's spot, we all say, oh no. I got the best of the best. I got, he's worthy to be praised. Oh, you understand? He was with me when I had nothing. And everything I got, I owe it all to him. You want me to leave? I can't leave him. How can I not show up at the assembly on Sunday morning to tell him thank you? You know, sometimes, boy, I, boy, I, I don't forget nothing. It's better not to even tell me. I remember when I first got here a few years, years later, a few months later, 
I, I gotta call his name. Brother Copeland used to call me on the phone and said, Brother Kenneth, what's going on, Brother Copeland? Man, I'm just praising God on the side of the road. I had to just pull over for a few minutes because God has been good to me. Everybody ought to be able to say that sometime. We can just pull up, just pull over. But Cotton calls sometime. Brother Hill called me sometime. Just, just call him, just say, you know, God has been good. I get text messages from memory just saying, praise God. Pray for me, but thank God. Everybody ought to have something in your life you ought to be able to say, thank God for. It ain't got to be always up here. Every now and then I need to be shooken up sometime and realize that I did. I still need him. No, oh, boy, boy, boy. I'm just saying. Ooh, I'm just saying. I read a caption one time. It was um, a Kent Hughes. He said, Michelangelo was once asked what he was doing as he chipped away at a shapeless rock. He replied, I'm liberating an angel from this stone. That's what God is doing with us. We are in the hands of a great maker, ultimate sculptor, who created the universe out of nothing. Listen, and he has never thrown away one rock. No, he ain't. That he began a master work on. Never had. Never have. And a whole lot of us were some bad rocks. But he didn't throw us away, did he? He just kept chipping at us. He said, no matter what you look like on the inside, I can make you better. That word create, the form, the shape. When a sinner is saved, he is the greatest demonstration of God's love. Bible says, for if any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, he is a new creation. The old things are passed away. All things are become new, and all things are of God. The redeemed, I love this, are trophies of God's saving grace. Oh, the Bible says in Psalms 19, verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament his handiwork. Have you ever looked at the vast expanse up in the heavens and see the sun, the moon, the stars, how they all just stand down and just sparkle all night long? They sit there right where God put them at, and they offer praise to God day and night all the time. They all stand. What are they stand at? They stand as testimonies to the great I am. The who he, I love Brother Hill's song. He sang this morning for me, there is beyond the age of blue, a God, and he right, concealed from human sight. He tinted skies with heavenly hue and framed the world with his great might. Somebody ought to say, there is a God. He is alive. In him we live and we survive. Oh, I from dust our God created man. He is a God. How do you look at yourself? He says, you are his workmanship. Come here. Stop letting people judge you. Stop letting the folk bring up your past. Matter of fact, get out that conversation. You're in the wrong spot anyhow. Well, I remember when you used to. I don't remember that. Well, back in the day, what about back in the day? I am in Christ now. That's where I am right now. I am his workmanship. He's creating something in me. And I'm not going to sit here and let you mess up what God's trying to create. Uh, someone said one time, I read an article in a little book. It said uh, some soldiers, Napoleon, the French military genius, was aboard his ship in the Mediterranean one day. And on one clear starry night, he was on deck. And as he was walking past a small group of soldiers, they was mocking the supreme being God. Said, how there ain't no such thing as no God. Somebody just made him up. And said how the God of creation 
He's just a joke. So Napoleon stopped and stared at them and then was sweeping his hands across the stars. And he told them, hey, gentlemen, if you want to get rid of God, you better start with them first. He said, go up there and remove the star. If you can remove that star, you can remove God. See, because that's a testament of who God is, the God of salvation. Today, church, he still has the power to change lives. Yes, he does. He still has the power to make the crooked straight. He still got the power to take a man who had lost his mind and set him up in his right mind. I recall a man named Legion. In the Bible, that said, say, what? Jesus came to him and said, what's your name? He said, my name is Legion. He said, no, I ain't actually what was in you. I said, what's your name? He said, a lot of times the idea of stuff in us alone, we go by what's in us and not our real name. He said, what's your name? And then Jesus began to work on him. And the demons got cast out of him. And now the man that was hurting himself who everybody was afraid to be around, they found him sitting and in his right mind. All because of who? Submitting himself to the Savior. If you are in Christ Jesus this morning and you're saved, if you're part of the body of Christ this morning, if you're part of the one that he died for, if you're part of that one, then you're okay. Stay where you are. But if you're not, the first step you got to do is you got to hear the truth. You got to hear the truth. You got to hear the gospel. You got to hear the gospel. But well, Paul said in Romans 1, 16, we quote all the time, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. No one can be saved unless this gospel is preached to you. Death, burial, and resurrection. You got to believe we know the Bible said without well, faith is impossible to do what? To please him. You got to have it. The next step is you got to repent. You got to repent of your sins. In Acts chapter 2, I recall him saying, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent. That's the first thing. Acts 3.19 says, repent and be converted. Don't just report and continue. Repent and be converted. Have a heart to want to change the direction you walk and the way you're thinking. The next thing you got to do is you got to confess faith in him. Nobody can be a Christian unless he believes in Christ. The church is built on the foundation of a good confession. He asked Peter, who do men say I am? He said, there are Jeremiah, the one of the prophets. He said, but who do you say I am? He said, thou art the Christ. The Son of the living God. You got to confess that same thing. And then you got to be baptized in water. Why? For the remission of your sin. For then in water, by faith, you come in contact with the blood. And you got to come in contact with it. But without the shedding of blood, there was no remission of sin. As you leave here this morning, if you don't remember nothing else, you remember to yourself today that I am God's workmanship. God is still working on me. And he's still working on you. Don't expect me to be perfect unless you're going to be perfect too. God is working on all of us. It's a task, y'all. It's a task. But he did it. Everything we need to be, Christ became that for us. Remember I told that show, Undercover Boss. He came in with employees, he fixed himself up looking like one of them so they would disguise itself so we can go in and see what they go through. Christ came down from heaven in Philippians 2, took on a fashion himself as a man and just to be familiar with what you and I go through. Later on the Bible says that in all points he was tempted just as we are yet without sin. Wow. He did all that for me. And he did it while I was dead in sin and trespass. I just want us to know, even in the midst of a pandemic that's going on, you are still God's workmanship. That people should be looking to you to see how should I move, how should I live, 
Hey, brother, you told me to say this morning, you ought to be able to give them clear direction. Well, when y'all, some, someone called me, I talked to uh, when we preach this weekend, about three or four of them called on the phone, we just talking. He said, brother, he said, uh, how you getting the ones you getting to show, how you getting to show up? I said, uh, I ain't doing that. He said, you answer me. I said, they show up because they love the Lord. I said, I would like for everybody to show up. I said, everybody ain't there. I said, but I ain't holding it against them. We pray for everybody. Everybody. That's what we pray for everybody. He said, well, man. He said, but man, I got, I got a congregation. What he said? About 400 members. What's going on? Man, we might not show up until after the first of the year. We on video every day. I said, that's good. He said, how don't? I said, no. I said, in everything, learn to give God thanks. Mm -hmm. I said, don't invite nothing in. You don't want to, want to come in. If they all safe, healthy, and secure, and you only got three, thank God for three. When you show up, I thank God for you being here. And I said, Lord, I pray you watch over them. If they go to and fro, keep them safely. Because the world is looking at us. In the midst of this mess that's going on, is looking at us. And you ought to be a light unto somebody. No man lights a candle and put it on the bushel. But sister on a lampstand that does what? Bring light to everybody. Listen to me. God got a purpose for your life. It won't be easy all the time, but he still got a purpose for you. Stay true to your purpose. Don't let what you go through be seen in you. Keep those two separated. I can be going through something, but guess what, though? I ain't got to tell you. I can be going through something. Who you going to tell? I got some brothers and sisters in Christ who I can call on the phone to talk to. Look here. If I can't talk to my brother, sister in Christ, I can't talk to nobody. I should be able to talk to you. And he, well, what am I going to tell you, Brother Kimmins? So when you get done talking, the best thing to do is, say, now you be done, let's go to God in prayer. Let's pray. That God give us the wisdom to work this thing out in our lives. We never step out of our own way because we are God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God foreordained. He already set aside the works for us to do, but we got to make ourselves available to find out what does God want me to do and do it the way he said do it. Why? So I can receive the blessings he wants me to have. Oh, I don't know about you all. I love being blessed by God. I love it. If you're this morning and you receive that message, if you're not a child of God, I'm telling you right now, today is a perfect day to make that right. Today is the best day to come to him because guess what? This afternoon, this evening, it ain't promised to you. You might not wake up on tomorrow morning, but you got it right now. And you can be right with him right now, coming to him. As I just told you, as you step to him, the same way the prodigal son stepped out of darkness, back into the marvelous light. He was restored, renewed, redeemed. Came back home to the Father's house where he was blessed. Mm -hmm. If you hear this morning, you received that message. Come unto him this morning while we stand and sing an invitation of song. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We're singing, oh, oh precious is the thy flow, thy makes me white as snow. No other fountain, no. 